Well, Jack McKeon was here. You were here, I guess, a week or two ago, yeah, right? Yeah. I had a chance to talk to Jack McKeon, and I asked him a little bit about the history. He was part of the instructional league, right. obviously a manager here when you were right. here, young. And I asked him a question about how hard did he fight for um, some of the best talent yourself. Yeah. He pointed to a bunch of guys, you, Fitzmorris, and he talked about how that helped build the nucleus for right. the ball club. What do you remember What do you remember about those days as a young pitcher in Omaha? Well, I was up from uh, Rookie League, so I was really fortunate to be here. And I know uh, Jack was the one that stepped up to, to get me here because they had me going to North Carolina, the Carolina League. So um, he was our top minor league development guy. Uh, the key to the Royals back then for me was the scouting, player development. He was on the player development sure. side. And uh, he had an eye for talent and guys that he wanted to work with. And, uh, you know, Alfred Morris was one, Gary Cram was another one. Another one. He, uh, he brought a lot of young guys along. And he stuck up for us and it turned out that was uh, the nucleus of, of the ball club. We were the first ones through. And George and Frank and, yeah. and Leo and, and they started coming through big. But, uh, you know, Jack got the big leagues right after that too. So, but yep. he was really a minor league guy, a development guy at that time. The mindset of this team, as you know, kind of changed the organization, changed over years, and that Omaha really wasn't used as a development right. tool for probably the last 15 or 20 years. Right. And that is starting to change, I think, right. under Dayton Moore some. I We've got so. a lot of young talent here who we wouldn't have right. seen a couple of years ago. Have you see, had a chance to see these guys play in spring training, and what do you think about some of their talents? Well, I mean, it has to happen here before it's going to happen for us. Um, you know, coming into this year, you know, I'm hopeful for what goes on in Kansas City, but we're not going to be good until they come through here. Right. And, and you're right about the history of the last 12, 15 years. Here come from double A to us, and they were not ready right. for the most part. So I think what we're doing now is going to be awesome for Omaha. It's going to really be better for us in the long run because the attitude is if you're an able, you're going to be there until that league cannot hold you anymore. And only then will you go to double A. No more of this good month, month and a half, and you're going to move on. We're skipping Omaha entirely. They're all entirely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Omaha had veteran guys, you know, marginal guys. He's kind of a, a safety net, if you will, for if something happened in Kansas City. But all the guys that could play went from double A to Kansas right. City. Those days are over. They're going to have to come here first. And obviously, they're, they are having to prove themselves. Mustakas has had a monster month here, and there's still no real talk of bringing him up in September. Well, you know, I, I, my idea and the way they handled us, you're not coming up until they're real sure you're not coming back. Mm -hmm. like, I, I wanted to come up before I came up. Jack just like, told me, he said, you could go now, but you'd be back in a month and a half because they'll catch up to what you're doing. I need to improve on this and this. And he told me what I need to do. He said, when you're ready, I'll tell you you're ready. I'll tell them you're ready, and I'll go to bat for you. And that's exactly the way it worked out, and I did not come back. Yeah. So most of the guys in those days, when they got through here, they didn't come back. And if they did, it was just for a little period of time, and then right back up. So I think that's the way to do it. We haven't been doing it that way, but I think we're getting back to doing it. Mike Moustakas, when he first came from AA to AAA, really struggled. Yeah. Um, they were throwing him, breaking stuff away, right. busting him inside. When he started to make adjustments, they started throwing him high fastballs and he was chasing them. Obviously, he's making the adjustments, but I don't think there's a big belief um, among Kansas City fans that there's that big of a difference between AA, AAA, and Major League Pitching. And talk to me about that. What are the differences? You know, I'm not really the guy to talk about it. I never played double-A. Um, there was a big move up from triple-A to the big leagues, and I hear now it's bigger than it was when yeah. I came through 40 years ago. So um, all I know is when people tell me, uh, we interviewed Mike a couple days ago after his three home runs, 11 RBIs, and he said there was a big difference from A-ball to double-A to triple-A. I, I asked him that question because it's been so long since I did it. You know, I wanted to find out. And he said it was a difference from A-ball to double-A. A big difference from double to triple. And from what he heard, it was a bigger difference from triple A to the big league. So, you know, as far as not calling him up, they have plans for him this winter. I think he's going to the Arizona Fall League. So, he's going to be playing. You know, everybody in Kansas City wants him there in April. For me, I'd rather wait. You know, if it happens to be mid-May or June, just whenever the time is right, if he is ready and ready to play every day, ready to handle the ups and downs. That's what I want to do. 
talk about just some of your some of your best memories at Rosenblatt. I know you didn't play here a long time. Oh, I did. I played here a long time. Uh, I was up from rookie ball. I was here for over two years. And to me, coming from rookie league, I went to school up in Sioux City. This is like making the big leagues for me at that time. Yeah, wow. And we almost made our home here in Omaha. So I loved it here. I couldn't have had a better time being right here. I had family 90 miles away. Um, it was wonderful. But again, I was getting anxious to get I south bet. of Kansas City when the time was right. But I've always loved it here. Rosenblatt probably looked a lot different in your day. Oh, I did. <laughs> and, and I got to broadcast here in 85, uh, the College World Series. I worked for ESPN at the time and uh, did the, the, the series from here, including the championship game. So uh, it's changed a lot, but very fond memories of my son this year with Kansas in the 93 College World Series. So this is really the only stadium that both of us played in. So I kind of hate, hate to see it go for that reason. I know all everybody does. Are you going to make it down to the new ballpark when they got to get it up? Well, I hope so. Yeah. I hope they have us back again. Yeah, it's not that far away. I went to double I on my own. I just wanted to see it. And I think there'd be enough reason to come up here. New ballpark, young team in. It's going to be really good. So I would see me coming back on my own, you know, even if we didn't have a club function. Paul, appreciate it.